Hey everybody, welcome to Well. Today I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to make this video as best I can out here in Indianapolis. Um, you know, I say try to make it as best I can because, to be honest with you, it's extremely frustrating to see what what my home city goes through and has gone through. You know, especially and predominantly in our black neighborhoods. Um, right now, I'm on 16th Street. If you know it, you know it. Um, on the basketball court, you know. Over here, you know, near where Chris Addicts is and, you know, near where, you know, um, IEPY is and, you know, right here at, 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 you know, White River and Fall Creek where it meets over that way but near Fall Creek right now. You know, it's just, you know, my, my you know, the, the intention of this video today, you know, is very near and dear to me as we deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, as we deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's benefit of the doubt. You know, being a black man, you know, benefit of the doubt is very important. It's life and death. You know, it's life and death. You know, and that benefit of, of the doubt it's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. And so to give an example, you know, in our country, you know, and around the world, but in our country, a man that has the benefit of the doubt can make as many mistakes as he wants to, can can make mistakes and live and grow through them, and can, you know, continue to try and grow forward and so forth. But a man who is not allowed to make any mistakes, you know, i.e., you know, um, does not have the benefit of the doubt, you know, well, you know, any, any, any mistake, small mistake, big mistake, any mistake is subject to be life and death. It's subject to be life and death, you know, and that's, that's one of the biggest issues that we face and that we have to learn to deal with, you know, when we have these discussions and I'm not trying to always have a, have a, a deep discussion, you know, well, I'm, I'm really not, I'm, I mean, I like to have a nice, lighthearted discussion as much as the next person. But the reality of it is we have a lot of things that we have to get dealt with, you know, in the here and now in order for us to um, grow forward, you know, in communities, you know, in, you know, in, in the state, you know, in, in the country, in the world. A lot of those things are just dealing with some of the hard truths that a lot of people are struggling to understand, you know, why, you know, is that person struggling? Why is that person struggling? Why, if, if, if they're doing okay... Why aren't, you know, they doing okay? Well, you know, there's a lot of dynamics to that. There's a lot of dynamics to that. A lot of it has to do with, you know, culture, environment. A lot of that has to do with, you know, intellect. A lot of that has to do with education. But, you know, fundamentally, you know, a lot of it has to do with the fact that we don't deal with things. There's a lot that's left unsaid. We don't handle issues. We don't deal with things in the way that we're supposed to deal with them as adults. You know, we're not we're not we're not facing them and we're not having conversations, we're not having dialogue, you know, people are afraid to talk to people, you know, and so with that being said, there's no conversations aren't being had and they're not productive. And everybody is more than comfortable staying in their own place. Now I'm having this I'm I'm making this video, you know, from Indianapolis, from a neighborhood, you know, where I, you know, grew up, you know from and walked through and went to school with and everything you know i don't even live here but i come here i work here i still deal with you know i still come to indianapolis i still you know have a burden for indianapolis i still do business in indianapolis i still provide service in indianapolis you know i still show up i still have family in indianapolis i'm still a part of indianapolis and i don't even live here anymore i don't even live in indianapolis anymore but yet and still indianapolis is always going to be you know home base you know, for everything that I'm doing, because this is where my family is from. You know, this is the crux of my family is from here. You know, just until the last several years, you know, I lived here for, you know, 30 something years. I'm from Colorado originally. But, you know, my father, you know, he he, he was born here. He brought us here in 1984, you know, right to this area, right to this area, you know, right over that way, you know, right over that way. I just drove through there. I tell you, and it's, it's heartbreaking to me. It's heartbreaking to see the neighborhood that I grew up in in such disarray and know that it was intentionally, you know, just like most places in the country, intentionally brought to that condition. 
I'm not even going to get into that in this video. I'm not going to get into gentrification, how I feel about that and everything. I'm not going to get into that. I'm going to get into just really communicating the fact that, you know, when we lack benefit of the doubt, it creates an environment where, you know, our value is less than, you know, less than. And with our value being less than, it creates it creates a situation to where, you know, if something happens and occurs and then there's a conversation to be had as a black man, I'm always on 10. I'm always on 10 I'm because I'm never out of the fire. I'm never out of the fire. Even if I'm, you know, making, you know, you know, millions of billions of dollars, I'm still never out of the fire because I'm always in the fire. I'm always in the fight. You know, and here's the, you know, things didn't really hit me really good until I started to listen to and, and follow, you know, some of the wealthiest black Americans, you know, that, that we have and, and, and the, to, to, to hear and to understand that even at their level, the struggle is still there. The black dynamic struggle is still there. You mean to tell me it's still an issue at this level? Yes. I mean, I was listening to an interview with, I think it was um, um, Don Peoples, you know, just different ones. Don Peoples, Robert F. Smith, you know, even Oprah, you know, but and I remember hearing um, a comment made that, and I may have said it in one of my past videos, but I mean, I remember a comment being made that in a lot of rooms, you know, your money is still no good there. You know, even though you have the money, you know, once you even have the money, you have the economics behind you, you have the access to as much money as needed for whatever, 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 whatever. In a lot of those rooms, your money is still no good. It's not just economics then. You know, it's, it's, it's well past economics. You know, if, if, if you get to a level at the height of this thing that we call, you know, um, our economy and you still have to struggle in a lot more rooms than you should have to struggle in because of the color of your skin, you know, and, and not the content of your bank account. You know, what do you do? What do you do? You know, what do you do? Well, here's the reality, you know. The benefit of the doubt goes a long way because in those rooms, you know, just like in many rooms, you know, it's the benefit of the doubt that makes the deal. It's the benefit of the doubt. You know, like they say, no like and trust. Oh, that sounds cute and all that. But apparently you don't know, like or trust me if 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 <laughs> if we're not doing business. Just saying, if we're not doing business, either you don't like, know or trust me. And now if, if those things, if those if all those are met and we're still not doing business, what is it? Well, it's the benefit of the doubt. You know, still at this point, lack the benefit of the doubt. And so as long as I lack the benefit of the doubt, there's nothing I can do to change that. It's not a me issue. It's not a me issue, even though it's a me issue. <laughs> you know, it's not a me issue, even though it's a me issue. It's a me issue that I got to deal with. It's not a me issue that you got to deal with because you don't have to. You don't have to give me the benefit of the doubt. Why? Because it's your choice not to give me the benefit of the doubt. I don't know. Hey, I didn't raise you. I don't know. You know, it's not my decision. But the reality of it is, is one time, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, the more, you know, being a black man, this is a constant, constant occurrence. So now I got to go to, you know, I got to go to here or I got to go to, I got to go to, got to go to there, you know, in order to get something done as opposed to right here, you know, where I should have all of the credibility, have all of the, you know, accessibility, have all of the benefit of the doubt, you know, that had I not been a black man, I would have. So just, you know, that's the sh um, short video I'm going to make today. Just but say, well, <coughs> excuse me, just, let's, 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 let's consider that we need to have a conversation around benefit of the doubt. And it's not a question of does it exist? I'm telling you it exists. You can choose to believe me or not. That's back to a benefit of the doubt. But I'm going to tell you it exists. Period. Period. You know, I'm going to stand on it. it. It exists. You know, it's up to you whether you choose to believe it or not. If you choose not to believe it, that means you choose not to believe the truth. Just say it's what it is. Benefit of the doubt goes a long way. I'll talk to you later. God bless you.